Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Today. It is The Savage Nation live again from New York City. Old blue eyes may be gone, but old brown eyes is very much alive. Welcome to The Savage Nation, the Friday edition. And boy, oh boy, is there news. The stock market is in free fall, second day in a row. We'll talk about why the market is crushed. More importantly, will it keep going down, or will it be back up? Who knows? If I knew I wouldn't be on radio, I'd be on Wall Street with George Soros. I'd be cashing in while saying I'm a good guy. I'd be crashing and cashing. We're going to also talk about rape. What did I say? That's right, real rape, real slavery, real enslavement of real girls by the barbaric scum called ISIS. The sweaty vermin are kidnapping, raping with impunity, selling girls on slave markets in the name of Islam, while your president, Obama, does nothing, while the idiots at the United Nations do nothing, while the so-called European Union doesn't lift a finger, while the politically correct Western liberals do nothing, while the human rights racketeers do nothing, they have not rescued one girl because they're Christians and Yazidis. I guess it doesn't matter that they're sex slaves in the hands of these greasy vermin throwbacks. I woke up this morning in the hotel room where I get three newspapers, the New York Post, Daily News, New York Times. Felt like old days back in my family home in Queens. Well, we used to get five papers. There used to be the Journal American and one other paper, which are the, the Daily Mirror. And my father, who was not an educated man, was a well-read man and loved the news. And I'd say, Dad, why do you read five newspapers? He said, I want to get different opinions. Well, guess what? So do I. But I don't know anyone listening to this show who has an opinion that differs than mine. When you have ongoing rape of young girls who are screaming out, and not one word comes out of the mouth of the ice cream licking president, or so-called women's rights groups, or any of the other people in the human rights business, it's enough to make anyone crazy. So I open the post, and there's an opinion piece by Phyllis Chesler, and it goes like this. Modern Schindler's, quote, I've been raped 30 times and it's not even lunchtime, cried one young Yazidi woman in a dangerous and desperate call. Chillingly, the young woman begged the man on the line, someone embedded with the Kurdish Peshmaga fighting ISIS, she said, quote, if you know where we are, please bomb us. There is no life after this. I'm going to kill myself anyway. That request was made a year ago. So far, not one whorehouse has been bombed. Not one slave auction has been interrupted by your great heroic leader of the Western world, Barack Hussein Obama. But there is one man who is doing everything he can to stop this. There is one man who is a modern-day Schindler. And he has a name, and he'll be with us on Monday. He's like the man who saved thousands of Jews during the Holocaust. He's a Canadian Jewish businessman, Stephen Maimon. And he's overseeing the rescue of more than 120 kidnapped Christian and Yazidi girls in Iraq. I intend to send them a large donation and do everything I can to stop this. I've never seen anything like it. It makes me crazy. I've got to tell you something. I'm on vacation with my family in New York. I was supposed to take this day off and do certain things. When I saw that story, I started to sweat, and I got angry again. I also got angry when I was watching the lipstick smears on Fox News yakking this morning and not saying one word about the rape of these girls, not saying one word, instead celebrating women army rangers like that's the biggest story on earth. Instead of talking about the real heroes in combat, we're supposed to celebrate some women because they let him into the Rangers if they took the tests four times. It got me crazier when I saw that the women on Fox News, and I blame them, by the way, because I don't expect anything from CNN. I don't expect anything from the anti-American crowd at MSNBC. But I expect something from the women at Fox News to talk about rape and sex slavery. Not one word. 
And by the way, while we're talking about the geniuses on Fox News, has anyone on Fox News followed what Michael Savage did on this show on Tuesday? When we had one intelligence official after another call this show secretly and talk about the crimes that Hillary Clinton uh, committed by getting those secret cartographic images out of that uh, locked se secure facility. I haven't seen one follow-up story. It didn't get posted anywhere. I did it on Tuesday. We had callers to 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-407-282, the Savage Nation. We broke the news. I don't care about that. It's not about me. It's way beyond about me. We had a national security breach that's on the top level of national security breaches by a woman who would be president of the United States of America. And nobody is talking about the fact that her messages were smuggled out of a secure facility and there are other people involved in the food chain of that smuggling. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? No one covered that. So we're talking about the rape of the truth, the rape of young girls, uh, the rape of the stock market by China, and other topics right here on the Savage Nation. Again, I invite you to call at 855-400-7282. Uh-oh, we got breaking news on the Savage Nation, Robert. Okay, this just into the Savage Nation. Two American military personnel were attacked on a Paris-bound train. I guess they don't know who perpetrated it. We'll have to wait three days to hear it was a Muslim with an AK-47. Remember the other day I told you? Bangkok, right away I told you it was Muslims, Islam. Three days it took them to tell you it was the Islamic war against the world. Here's the story, Fox News. The gunman, not naming him. Three people, including two American military personnel, were injured today when at least one person, again person, armed with an AK-47 and knife, opened fire on a passenger train that was heading from Amsterdam to Paris. The gunman was overpowered by off-duty U.S. soldiers. They should have broken his neck. They should have broken his neck and thrown him underneath the train. I suppose he'll be sent to New York City for a show trial. Anyway, when the train stopped in the northern French city of Arras, he was arrested. Two of the victims were seriously injured by the unknown gunman. Huh? They still don't know who did it, huh? What do they think a bunch of Catholic nuns did it? What I think a bunch of escaped Christian prisoners shot at the American military. We are losing the war. There is a war going on. It's a world war. And they are on the war path. And I've got to tell you something else. As a student of history, this is going to end very badly for us if we don't do something radical very soon. I have studied how in a period of only 25 years, the Arabs came out of the desert and conquered a good portion of the earth in the exact same method methods that are being used today with small armies 10 men a thousand men they would attack a village kill everybody in the village rape kill murder put fear in the hearts of people and take over an entire nation they're repeating the same strategy that was written by their master in their holy book and don't think that this is coming out of the air and stop telling me this is an anomaly this is a war we're involved in it but all right you don't want to hear about it you want to hear about something else Incidentally, while we're talking about the psychosis of liberalism, here's one for you that I found on my own website. Boston University professor, that's an oxymoron, by the way, blames the United States for Islamic sex slavery. I swear to God. A so-called professor wrote this. Her name is Kesia Ali. That should tell you everything you need to know about the cover-up. But apparently the so-called professor blames the United States for sex slavery in the Middle East. It's unbelievable. You see, she says that the Islamic State is not practicing sex slavery because it is sanctioned in the Quran, which it is, by the way. It's because the United States has, has done very bad things in Iraq. This is what passes for analysis by psychotic professors on political campuses today. We'll talk about these topics and others right here on the Savage Nation, 855-407-282. If you care to call the program, please do. I'm trying to get my call screener back up. 855-407-282. Uh, the other news is pretty uh, terrifying, including the uh, fiscal news. People are freaked out over the stock market. They want to know what's going on and why is it going on. Why is the market falling like this? Who do you blame? Well, I guess they can blame Donald Trump if they want. Oil is below $40. But is that the reason? No, that's not the sole reason. We know that China is manipulating its currency. 
in order to make U.S. and other foreign products more expensive to their own domestic market, to their buyers. Is that the whole reason? Obviously not. It's probably more complicated than that. And I'm not a fiscal expert, but I can do math. I can do 2 plus 2 equals 4. I got this email this morning from Craig Smith, who has been a long-term sponsor of the Savage Nation. As you well know, he has backed my show for over 10 years uh, with his gold company, Swiss America. And here's what he said, Michael, I was just thinking about the global market crush that is underway. The Dow is off 800 points in three days, and the S&P has broken the critical 2050 level and is currently at 1997. The reason I bring it up is this. For the people that listened to your advice in the commercials and got the reports and book you offered, they were informed on what is happening and not panicking. Others who didn't listen to you have no clue what to do right now. So once again, Savage, you won't get any credit for it, but the markets did exactly what you predicted they would as you warned listeners about the growing debt crisis and currency wars. Have a good weekend, Craig from Swiss America. And I'm telling you, this is not a funny story. We don't know what's going to happen. And I don't know if market forces will bring stocks back up. I don't know if the uh, big money is just cashing out so that the little money follows it and then they come back in in a storm. We don't know. We know Apple took a 4% dive. We know Microsoft took a 3.9 dive. We know that Nike took a 3.7 dive. And we know that media stocks in particular were hit like crazy. Disney stock is down 15% from the highs. And why is Disney stock down? Well, we'll talk about what we think. And uh, with Disney alone and, and, frankly, other media stocks, at issue primarily is the media. And Disney's main issue is media networks, which includes cable network and broadcasting. And what's that about? Well, I was in a cab last night, and the folks traveling with me said more and more consumers are cutting the cord and dropping traditional cable subscriptions. It's an interesting topic unto, its, unto itself. Because Disney owns a lot of cable, and they stand to lose a lot of revenue from its subsidiaries like ESPN and ABC. And as we were discussing it, the cab driver turned around, and he said, it's interesting you people should be saying that people are cutting the cord on cable. He said, because my kid doesn't even go on television anymore. He doesn't, they don't watch television. They get all of their TV and all their entertainment off the iPhone. So live and learn. It's the Savage Nation, 855-4072. If you care to join the show, I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. We're talking about industrial rape not seen on the planet for, what, hundreds of years? Tell me when there was last industrial rape write down the two words rape on an industrial scale the last I read of such a situation was during the rape of Nanking China by Japanese troops who went wild and raped and killed with impunity that was in World War two we are now witnessing industrial rape rape on an industrial scale by the greasy perverts in Isis Obama is licking an ice cream cone while this goes on, could care less, hanging out with the poor people, the billionaires and trillionaires that he's known to hang around with, while talking about income inequality, the frauds at the United Nations, the twisted minds at the European Union, the vermin in the politi politically correct world of the Western intelligentsia, the women's groups have said nothing about the rape of these girls. They're begging for us to bomb the brothels where they're being raped around the clock by these greasy perverts in ISIS. They're saying, kill us, because we're going to kill ourselves when we get out of here. And you're sitting idly by. You know what kills me about this? Do you know how many Jews I have met in my lifetime who said, America did nothing during the Holocaust to save the Jews. America could have bombed the tracks to Auschwitz, and they did nothing. Where are the American Jewish community? Where's the American Jewish community now? And I point my finger at the American Jewish community now. They're the ones who should be doing more than anybody on earth. They should be doing more than anybody. Where are all of those loudmouths that have attacked me over the years? Nowhere to be found. 
855-400-7282. What a sick time we're living in. What a sad, sick time that we're living in that even the women of Fox News won't cover this topic for reasons known only to their bosses. Let's take a couple of quick callers. I don't have much time. and It's, it's unbelievable. The stock market's in the toilet, down 100, 450 points today. The Pope is coming here to cause more trouble next month, trying to stir up more uh, hatred between nation and nation, trying to stir up hatred between uh, income and equality, this and that. It's unbelievable the world we're living in. And thank God I'm here for you. Because if I wasn't here, there'd be few voices left, i got to tell you that. I listen to the news myself, and I want to break things. I watch the news shows. I want to smash an ashtray through the television set. But I control myself, and I bring it to you, the Savage Nation. But I don't want to give you just rage. Rage is not a good thing to project on the radio. I can do it. I can do it, believe me. There are people who have no talent in the radio business. And they cover up their lack of talent and their lack of humor by screaming and screeching like Frito in The Godfather. And I don't think that makes for interesting radio or entertaining radio or radio that's going to motivate people. Screechers don't sell. Matt on WJR Line 2, welcome to the Savage Nation. What's your topic? Uh, thank you. It's immigration, Dr. Savage. And on that note, thank you for uh, replacing. Um, so on the immigration side, I'm wondering at what point... Does the U.S. have the right or even the obligation to start considering sending our troops in to places like Honduras or Mexico or these places that are invading us, right? I'm not hearing anybody talk about that. There has to come well, a... Well, you're, you're, ho, ho, ho. you're raising the stakes. You're talking about a military intervention to stop the, the invasion is what you're saying. You know that's never going to happen. I am, I'm on record for over 15 years calling for the placement of National Guard troops or U.S. military and equipment on the border with Mexico to stop the invasion. I'm not going to backtrack from that. I think we need more than a wall. I think we need a absolute steel wall to stop it or we'll have no nation. I've said it a million times. I've written about it. And I cover it in uh, Government Zero. My book will be out in October. No borders, no language, no culture. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. I'd like to tell you the news is good and leave you with a ha-ha feeling for this Friday, but it's not good. It's bad. Economically, the stock market's got people freaked out. It dropped 450 points today. Uh, internationally, there is industrial rape going on on a level I have not seen since the rape of Nanking. And the, the heartbreaking part is that we know it's going on in real time, and Obama is doing nothing about it. Obama is doing nothing about it. UN is doing nothing about it. The EU is doing nothing about it. The human rights racketeers are doing nothing about it. And the girls are crying out from the whorehouses being run by the greasy vermin in ISIS. They're sending messages such as, I've been raped 30 times and it's not even lunchtime. This is in uh, Phyllis Chesler's column today in the New York Post. It's what got me to come in today. I said, look, I'm supposed to be off today, but I can't stay away from this story. The rape of the Christian Yazidi women and the silence of the West is worse than the silence of the lambs. She's actually begged the man on the phone line to bomb the house that she was being kept in she says i'm going to kill myself anyway after what they've done to me and by the way the people who have escaped and the other yazidi women who have joined the anti-isis kurdish groups are not being helped by the united states who will not even send them weapons we won't even send them weapons which side are we on are we on the side of the greasy vermin in isis are we the reason that they're able to rampage with impunity? You're telling me that there aren't hard men in the military who would like to go there and cut their throats and, and, and eliminate them from the earth? You know there are. The problem is we don't have a commander-in-chief. We have a commander-in-grief. And the problem is, is that we're asleep at the switch. And we're talking about Hillary's scandal. It's a huge scandal. The email leaks out of a secure facility. It means someone ferreted the information out of that facility for her to someone else. And nobody is reporting on that, even though that news was broken here on this radio show just the other day, from callers in the intelligence community who called anonymously. If you want to talk about these topics, the phone number is 855-400-7282. Any of these topics are huge. They're very big. 
Let's go to the first caller right now, WMAL in Washington, D.C., Line 4. Sherman, go ahead, please. Yes, Dr. Savage, I was calling to say that I agree that with you that there was intel leaked to the Benghazi attack with uh, due to the pinpoint accuracy of borders and other such weapons being used on that attack, on that compound. Wait, wait, let's back up. You're saying you think that, you're not saying it was Hillary, but you're saying somebody was giving coordinates for the embassy to the enemy, and that is how they had pinpoint accuracy in the mortar attacks? Absolutely. It's not a, it, it, an 81-millimeter mortar is used. Um, it's, it can be used as a deterrent, but with the accuracy that they were using it, they had, they had intel. They had intel to set it up. Well, if we, go to, if we go to the next step of what you're implying, it's pretty frightening. We do know that Ambassador Stevens... Uh, was a voice that uh, someone wanted silenced. Isn't that true? That is true. Now, let's just follow the dots on this one. Ambassador Stevens, remember, he was a human being. Uh, there were some special forces gentlemen there who were protecting him. They were human beings with families. They were there. The embassy fell. What was Ambassador Stevens doing in Benghazi at the time well, the story is he was taking Gaddafi's weapons and sending them to the Syrian rebels, who are very, very similar to uh, the ISIS groups. He was taking weapons out of Libya and bringing them or having them transported into Syria to these groups. Is it that they wanted that trail covered? Isn't that what you think? Fall guy, absolutely. Okay, so now you want to follow the dots on this, and now I'll switch from Michael Savage, talk show host, to Michael Savage, a novelist, fiction writer, a man who wrote Abuse of Power, A Time for War, uh, Countdown to Mecca. If I were writing the story, it would be a high-up government official in the United States did not want anyone to know that they were involved in transferring weapons from Libya to Syria, and they needed to eliminate the one individual who could blow the whistle on them. Does that make sense to you? Oh, absolutely. Well, you see, it's good that I'm a fiction writer because I'm not as important as the men who broadcast it at NBC, CBS, and ABC, or the girls at Fox News. They're the ones who give you the real truth. Thank you for the call. WABC, right around the corner, Roz, welcome to the Savage Nation Line 2. What's on your mind? Uh, about the, the Christian women being raped over there and the women here wanting nothing to do with it. What's sad is, imagine saying anything about their reproductive rights or their pro-choice, pro-life standing, then all of a sudden you wonder if they would get involved then. Because, like you said... Well, why is, it that the why is it that the loud women who are involved in women's rights issues are saying nothing about industrial rape of Christian and Yazidi women in the Middle East by these greasy barbarians? Why? It is. It's disgusting, because it's just a matter of... No, I didn't say it's disgusting. We know it's disgusting. I didn't say that. I asked you another question, is why are they silent? Because it doesn't fit their agenda as to what they need to be upset about. Well, that's one way to put it. What's fitting their agenda? Okay, no, I understand. It's a different way of looking at things than I would say it another way. Okay, thank you. Let's take another call, which is uh, out of a man named Jordan from uh, Mississippi. Jordan on line five, go ahead, please. Taking my call. My thing is with the Hillary scandal and the emails, there's a universe code of military justice that governs the laws that government and military personnel both fall under. If a soldier would have done that, if a young officer would have done that, they would have been done. Their career can. They would have, they would have been striped, stripped of their security clearance. You name it. It's not fair for the public. But, Jordan, you know, as we well know, as we well know, absolute power corrupts absolutely. And we know that when her husband, Bill Clinton, was commander-in-chief, what he did with Monica Lewinsky would have terminated the career of any army officer is that correct any officer period any branch yes right in other words he was commander-in-chief and he was fooling around with an underling in the white house no less if an army officer had done that or any army uh, any member of any armed forces had done it with anyone they would have been thrown out of the military and accused of rape so as you well know there's a reason that people go into politics which is that you can commit crimes with impunity isn't it a wonderful thing? Isn't that a great field to get into? You can do things that no one else can do and never go to jail. You're above the law. Isn't that wonderful to live in a country like this? What is my mind, Dr. Savage? 
Thank you. You cleared your mind. That opens up one line at 855 400 7282. Apple lost $158 billion in stock. I can't say that it bothers me very much. I mean, I'm not happy about it, but I don't own any Apple stock. I don't own any stock. In fact, I don't have a dime in the stock market because I feel it's the big money that controls it. And I had no way to know what would go up and what would go down. Oil has had its biggest losing streak in 30 years. Now, let's look at China. You know, I want to go into this, the China thing. Let's for a minute talk about it because I'm not an expert on it, but I have common sense. Why do you think stocks are crashing? Will it go down further or is it just profit taking and the big money is going to come back in and drive the numbers up while you think it's going to go down? Be careful. Be very careful. I've seen these patterns before. Although it could be like a, the Great Depression coming. We don't know what's coming Monday. There's going to be a lot of nail biting over the weekend in Martha's Vineyard amongst the poor people who Obama associates with. But let's start with some commonsensical issues. Did you know that 45 to 50% of all iPhones sold in the world are sold in China? Well, that would explain why Apple stock is dropping. China also devalued their currency, making U.S. products and other foreign products cost more. Okay, so they manipulated their currency, something they're well known for. These are issues that I, I think you shouldn't ignore in analyzing this. But the fact is the stock market crashed by 450 points today after dropping enormously yesterday. Some people fear this is the beginning of the end of the cycle of the Gilded Age. I mean, we do know we've been living through up, 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 and we all know the laws of thermodynamics tell us that uh, for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. The fact of the matter is we also know there are cycles in real estate, there are cycles in stocks, and many people feel that the cycle has peaked out and that the correction, so-called, is finally occurring. But there's another factor. When you look at the valuations of companies that produce nothing, and they produce nothing, and Apple produces a phone, okay, I get it. But you look at companies like Facebook, what do they produce? Nothing. It's air. It's hot air. You look at a lot of companies that produce nothing, they're fictions. The hot air has come out of their balloons. It's that simple. But let's go to the bigger issues, and I think what you want to talk about which is Hillary's scandal. And I got to go back to what happened in the show on this program when I was at the ABC studios here in New York City on Tuesday. I had four people who got on the air with me who uh, identified themselves as embedded individuals in the CIA, FBI, DE, Defense Intelligence Agency, you name it, DHS, and for years, military. And they said that what went on with Hillary's uh, emails is, is unbelievable because she did not simply transmit an email from her black BlackBerry. Somebody had to take that cartographic intelligence that was being fed by the U.S. Army or the U.S. military, the cartographic division, and it had to go through a secured facility, and somebody had to remove it from that secured facility and then transmit it to Hillary Clinton on her BlackBerry or whatever she was using. Means that there are people in the food chain which means that I would not go jogging in Marcy Park late at night if I were any of those individuals in that dark room, okay? There's more to this story than meets the eye. Something is, re is not being reported, and what really bothers me is that as one of the most listened to talk shows in America, you would think that within 48 hours of that, of that show, some one of the geniuses would have followed up on this story but they're not follow up, following up on this story i i put the uh recordings up on michaelsavage.com for the world to read to hear to listen to wouldn't you think that by now that story would have been linked on the drudge report I, where where is the story it's only on my website why why is nobody reporting it why is nobody transmitting that story what is it that they're hiding for her why they why is the world covering up for hillary clinton and when you say Hillary Clinton, in the same breath, you've got to say Donald Trump. Because Donald Trump, no matter what they throw at him, is coming right back at him. There's a boomerang going on here. And have you noticed how they've tempered the, the attacks? Have you noticed how the loudmouths who ripped at Donald Trump not a week ago are suddenly backtracking or suddenly feathering their remarks? Isn't it interesting that even Fox News, which was dismissing him two weeks ago, is sort of not doing it now after they try to tear him apart? And the only loser was Martha Washington, who's still not been seen. She's on vacation somewhere, probably at Martha's Vineyard, 
hobnobbing with the liberals she makes believe that she's not a member of? Yeah, right. Nevertheless, Donald Trump is surging because America, of all races, by the way, and all economic groups, see him as the last great hope for America after the garbage we've lived through over the last number of years under this this uh, irregime, this irregime. I call it this irregime. 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 Well, anyway, you want some New York stories while I'm here? I'll throw them in at one point. The food, the food, the food. <laughs> New York's all about the food. I'm at another broadcast facility right now. Uh, I can't mention it's it's a sister company to the one I was at. It's another part of the city, and unlucky for me, it's beautiful. I love it, and I'm in a small broadcast booth, which I love because it's totally beautiful, soundproof. But unlucky, unluckily for me, there's a, a a cafeteria in this building, and my host took me down before the show, and I'm a, I'm a food nut. He said, "Ah, it's a mixed bag. It's you know, it's cafeteria food." Well, there it was, sausage and peppers, macaroni and cheese, all the forbidden foods <laughs> that I don't eat. But my my family was with me. They said, Dad, don't go near that. Have a salad. I said, I can't. I have to have the sausage and peppers, which I didn't have. The food is amazing in New York, but I know what it did to my ancestors and their friends. They're all dead from it <laughs> before the age of 50. The young, healthy people were eating salads. Oh, God. God help me. 855-472-82. Let's have the callers right now on the Savage Nation. WABC Matthew, line nine. Go ahead. You're up on the Savage Nation. Do Dr. Savage, uh, I just wanted to say I was in the United States Marine Corps and uh, in third time, third Marines, and I was a mortarman, 0341. And what the gentleman was saying, the caller was saying a couple of minutes ago about how you would need grid coordinates is spot on, sir. In fact, you would need a ten-digit coordinate to get down a square mile. So it's actually okay. Let's start with let, let's analyze that for the average person, including myself. You're talking now about the Benghazi ambassador's secret location where he was hiding from the vermin who were trying to kill him. Uh, he was hit by more. They were hit by mortars, and you're saying in general a mortar cannot fire in a general direction with any accuracy. In our training, you would have to fire and then move into the corrective area. But from what uh, the reports were saying, those mortars were dead on. As a Marine, being that we trained all the time, I'm telling you, Dr. Savage, you have to either have very good training or you have to have the exact elevation and the traversing ability to know where to go, where you're actually aiming at. And it has to be... All right, I'm up against the hard break. I hear you on that. We're talking about Hillary Clinton's gigantic email scandal. I'll be right back on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. Hey, Michael. We have more breaking news in the Savage Nation about that train attack by a Muslim fanatic from Morocco. He had an uh, AK-47 and a knife on a train, passenger train. It was unarmed U.S. Marines who stopped this piece of garbage. They beat him to a pulp on the train. Perhaps uh, they'll be tried in an EU court. Nevertheless, the high-speed train between Amsterdam and Paris, they uh, took him down. This piece of garbage, this Moroccan, was known to French intelligence services, and they did nothing. He went off with a... Rifle, he opened it up on the train. Three U.S. Marines on the train disarmed this piece of garbage. Unarmed U.S. Marines. The man was armed with a deadly Kalashnikov. Three people wounded. The gunman is currently in police custody, but you got to listen to the rest of the story. You're not going to believe the end of the story. Are you ready for this? The French authorities said we're in contact. We're looking to see what happened. Francois Hollande. A man as useless as hollandaise sauce, the president of France, said, I express my solidarity with the wounded. Everything is being done to shed light on this tragedy. This guy is as clear as hollandaise sauce, just like our president and de Blasio in New York. Liberalism is a mental disorder. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Quick to talk. Borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. 
Welcome to the Savage Nation, hour number two this Friday uh, out of New York City. We're talking about the falling stock market. Panic is in the air. We're talking about Hillary's gigantic, grotesque national security scandal that is not being covered in any depth by virtually anyone in the media. We are talking about industrial rape. That is rape on an industrial scale going on as we speak, being conducted by the greasy perverts in ISIS, while Obama, the UN, the EU, Western liberals, and the so-called human rights racketeers have not saved a single Christian or Yazidi girl from these hell holes where they are being held and then, by the way, being sold uh, as slaves on slave markets. Isn't it sickening? We're also talking about the heroism of U.S. Marines on a train in France. Shooting on a Paris-bound high-speed train, a Muslim from Morocco pulls out an AK-47 and starts spraying the passengers. Three U.S. Marines without weapons took down this piece of garbage. While in France, they're saying they're going to investigate. Yeah, well, he was well known, by the way, to French security services, who again did nothing. Just as the ticking time bombs here in America march around with impunity, waiting to strike, and our intelligence services do nothing as we all sit here going about our business. That's life today. That's a little pastiche of what's going on in the world. If you care to comment on any of these stories, the phone number to the Savage Nation is 855-407-282. If you do get on the show, you'll be heard by more people than you meet for the rest of your life. Think about that. And so while you're thinking about that, although I'm a very congenial individual and you think you're talking to a friend, which is good, you're not talking to a friend. You're speaking to one of the top radio talk shows in the world, to a very large audience of very intelligent people. So try to be cogent, form your thoughts, focus them, and give it to us in 15 seconds or less. Let's go to a story right now. WMAL, Tom, line four. Go ahead. You're on the Savage Nation. Good afternoon, Dr. Savage. Um, there's more to this email server scandal than just the server. Whoever got this information over to the server, you had to get it across a data line, a data circuit, just like we're talking on the phone right now. There's equipment involved. None of this equipment could have possibly been hardened to meet the Department of Defense standards. There's a plethora of issues uh, of security violations that makes my head spin. I build data centers for both Department of Defense and for commercial sector all over the world, and this this is much, much larger than just a single piece of equipment. Well, let's go back in time. Did you hear my show on Tuesday where uh, individuals in intelligence called and talked about the, the kind of secure facility in which uh, this occurred? Yes. I, I, my, were you, I, sorry, did you say yes? Yes. Okay, so you're now adding to that puzzle by saying what? Well, it's not just the server. They had to, they had to transfer that information from wherever it was, Department of State, to wherever that server was located. That has to be a data line. There has to be a router. There has to be terminal equipment. Where was that equipment? Was that equipment hardened for usage? Not likely. Within 10 seconds of putting a router, a new router on the Internet, Hackers already have that IP address, and they're testing for router issues to hack into that router. If this server was sitting in a, in a bathroom closet somewhere, what is the likelihood of the router having any integrity against, uh, against hackers out there in the world? Well, wait, well, where would this router have been? You mean, what, in, in Hillary's house in Chappaqua? Where would it have been? It has to be co-located with the server because that's the terminal end in front of the server. You know, okay, the so her server, wa her server was where? In her house? Well, it was wherever it was with this company. It was in a, uh, a bathroom closet. I forget the location, but it was it was either it was either in a commercial building or somebody's house. But regardless of where it was, it has to have terminal equipment to transverse the internet to get to that location. That whole sector, that whole segment, rather, is vulnerable to hack. There had to be hundreds of people siphoning off that information if there's any vulnerability. Why do you suppose, here's, here's a bigger part of the story, why is it that no one is, is, is digging deeper into this scandal? Why is it that it's only callers to this show who are so outraged by what Hillary Clinton did? Why is it not going viral? Why is it not bigger? I don't know, Dr. Savage, because I hold multiple above top secret clearances inside and outside of DOD and that your feet wouldn't even touch the floor 
as they threw you in jail for any one of these violations, period. Now, so why is Fox News ru- not running with it? We expect nothing from CNN. We expect nothing from MSNBC, nothing from the major media. But why is Fox News not covering this? The prospects are scary to even consider. Well, I'll give you the answer. And it's purely intuitive because the fix is in for Hillary to be the next president. And it goes as deep as the ownership of Fox News, in my opinion. Rupert Murdoch is calling the shots. He's telling Roger Ailes what to do. And he is then transmitting this information to the girls uh, and boys at Fox News and saying, leave it alone. Don't touch it. It's not a story we want to go near. Why? Because they want her to be president. That's why they attack Trump as often as possible. And I'm waiting, by the way, for Donald Trump to jump on this issue. I am waiting to hear when Donald Trump explains it in simple terms to the average voter out there why he must be president and how when he's president, he will not have a server in his toilet when he's uh, dealing with top secret information. I thank you for the call. Uh, If there's anyone else who has any information that has not yet been uh, transmitted or even discussed other than on radio, uh, the phone number is 855-407-282. Let's go to WABC, Mark, Line 7. What's on your mind? What's the topic tonight? Savage, it's an honor to speak to you, sir. I, like you, am outraged at our politicians and the news' inability or unwillingness to call a radical Islam what it is. In fact, it's only a matter of time before there are serious attacks in our own backyard. Just this past week, at my local Roman Catholic Church, our Holy Redeemer Church in Freeport, New York, an Islamic sympathizer covered the statues of Jesus and Mary with black ISIS headgear and spray-painted pray to Allah on the statues and burn them. The only mention I could find in the news was News 12 Long Island reported it simply as uh, possibly a, a hate attack or vandalism. In other words, we're living, through, we're living through a period equivalent to the early days of World War II where the Nazis uh, were operating in the United States of America freely and people didn't want to hear about it, they didn't know about it, uh, the FBI didn't turn the other cheek, look the other way. They didn't want to panic the population, in other words. And they figured it would go away if they ignored it. What they don't understand is that history is repeating itself. This country is riddled with enemies of our way of life. And it's only a matter of time until additional innocent civilians are killed, as have been in the past. Let's not forget they have already attacked in this country. And let's not forget that after they attacked, we found out that they were known to uh, the so-called intelligence services. I don't blame the men and women in the intelligence services who knew that they were here. I blame the fact that a fish rots from the head down. And I don't have to tell you who the head of this fish is and where he is right now. He has given clear instructions to every intelligence service in this country, look the other way when it's involved with Muslim extremists and never ever report that it's a Muslim extremist until you're absolutely required to do so when pressed to do so still deny that it's got anything to do with Islam we know that that's a fact absolutely Dr. Savage and I I think it's only a matter what can I do about it you think I like being the only one talking about this am I the only one am I trying to win a prize I'm trying to warn America because I think that it's way past the point of obvious to anyone with a brain that there's a war going on and we're losing it the phone number here is 855-407-282. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Welcome back to the Savage Nation, broadcasting live once again from New York City to wrap up the best week in broadcasting that most people have heard in their entire life. I want to go to my website, michaelsavage.com, because I posted some stories that are worth looking at. Trump pushes birthright citizenship to forefront of debate. Good for him. We talked about it the other day. The next story that I posted is China syndrome. Will Beijing's ailing economy drag us all down? Michael Savage Newsletter says Cuba now owes Americans billions in reparations. I guess that hasn't made it to Fox News. Professor blames the United States for ISIS sex slavery. Take a look at her face and you'll know more than you need to know. Another mental case that belongs in a mental hospital rather than in a university. But then again, the differential between the mental hospitals of the 1950s in America and liberal universities today is almost indistinguishable. The only difference is that they pay the inmates now 
rather than constrain them in straitjackets. Savage Nation, Intel Ops calls Savage and tell how Clinton broke many laws. Didn't make it to your local website, I guess. 16 journalists accept Planned Parenthood awards despite horrifying abortion videos. They are the Nazi killers of the day. Slovakia to welcome Christian immigrants but reject Muslims. Slovakia to welcome Christian migrants but reject Muslims. Well, that's interesting. That's the opposite of the United States of America. By the way, did you see this little story the other day? Scientists who found scientists who found gluten sensitivity evidence have now shown it doesn't exist. I couldn't believe that story, but then I've been telling you this for years, that the whole idea of gluten sensitivity is either overblown or completely fraudulent. And I use common sense to tell you that, uh, let's be real here, stop with the gluten-free this and the gluten-free that. I've said it in plain English for two to three years right now, because I'm the only expert in the field of nutritional science in the history of, well, in, in current American media. They don't know what they're talking about. How do I prove this? Common sense. Let's start with the Bible. Bread is the staff of life. Let's look at every ethnic we've seen on earth. Middle East, they make foodstuffs, flatbreads out of wheat. They haven't heard about gluten sensitivity. They weren't sent to Harvard. Mexico, they make tamales. They haven't uh, gone to Harvard. Wherever you look, you see ethnic groups living on wheat-based products, except in the stupid United States of America, where people are walking around half insane from the nutty diets they're on. Here's another article on michaelsavage.com. You ready for this? Donald Trump says if a Republican did what Hillary Clinton did, they would have already been in jail. How do you like that one? Michael Savage says Trump is the Winston Churchill of our time. That was about two weeks ago. Rudy Giuliani picked up on that without attribution. That's okay. All that matters, as Lao Tzu said, is that your ideas are being talked about doesn't matter whether you're given any credit. It's the ideas that count. Let's talk about the collapse of the economy right now, if it's really a collapse or we're just being had. Line 9, Martin, WMAL, your topic is fiscal discipline. Go ahead, please, on the Savage Nation, Line 9. Uh, Vla uh, tell Vladimir that I will have more flexibility in my second term. Wait, wait, ho sir, wait, wait, hold it. I don't know. Who should tell Vladimir what? I'm sorry, should I repeat that? Yes, I didn't understand what you meant by tell Vladimir. Vladimir, I will have more flexibility in my second term. You remember that. Okay, but you're talking in riddles. I don't know what you're talking about. Who are you referring to? This is the transformation of America and the rest of the world as planned by our current leader. How's that? But you're not being specific enough for the average listener. I may kind of understand what you're saying. What are you suggesting? I'm saying that this is a deliberate manipulation of the world's financial system to bring it down. Every government is spending much more than it's taking in. All right, so what is the end game? Why would every government want the, the economy to collapse? How do they benefit? The governments don't want the, the economy to collapse. Only communists and dictators want the, uh, the economy to collapse. But, but why would Obama want our economy to collapse when he's built his entire reputation on saving us from a collapsed economy? It doesn't make sense. Well, if you let me uh, explain. I did already let you already a minute and a half. You haven't made a, a, a scintilla of sense. I'm sorry. Why would Obama want the economy to collapse? It doesn't make sense to me. All right, let's move on. The man's probably been without a mate for many years, and he thinks that he's got someone he's talking to who used to nod and say yes as he ate her meatballs. You know, you go to a restaurant, you see couples together, older couples. It shocks me. It occurs in every city in the country. The man orders a salad, something light on cholesterol, no dairy, no cream, no salt, and he eats like a bird. The woman orders the most cholesterol-laden dishes you could imagine. Beef, stroganoff, you name it. Cheesecake. And while they're eating, he's putting his fork into her cholesterol-rich food, nibbling, and she's eating the salad from his plate, so he thinks he's eating a healthful diet. It goes on. Tell me if I'm wrong. My assistant is looking and laughing because I see it. He's dipping into the meat and the gravy and the this and the that and slobbing it all over himself, and he thinks he's eating the salad because it's disappearing. But it's not him who's eating the salad. The wife is. That reminded me of the caller just now. He talked, but I didn't understand a word he said. 
as uh, as much as I detest the policies of Barack Obama, the last thing on earth this guy on earth this guy would want is a collapsed economy. How does he benefit from that? I know there'll be martial law. We'll have to go to him for food stuff. Okay, I get it. Except I don't buy it. KBOI Radio, Scott Line Three, go ahead, please. What's on your mind? What's the topic? Yes, sir. It's obvious that uh, our own government's not willing to do anything necessary to get rid of ISIS. So. I'd like to pose the idea to you, sir, that perhaps if Israel expanded its borders to their historic boundaries, then they would have the elbow room necessary to deal with the problem. You mean if Israel expanded what? Through the entire West Bank to the Mediterranean? Yes, sir. Now, how would that affect ISIS? Well, they would have more land... It would basically like be like uh, if the United States went from being just California. So, uh, let's let's clear the air on this issue because I've talked about it before and it bothers me, but I have to say it again. I'm sorry, but Israel is not in that fight against ISIS, and they could be. They have the most powerful military in the Middle East. And when I saw two months ago ISIS in a victory parade after they took Mosul, a, a half a mile long of their Toyota trucks with machine guns, and not one rocket was fired by an American warplane, nor an Israeli warplane, I said to myself, the fix is in. I'm sorry, Israel is not fighting ISIS because they want ISIS to thrive. They want ISIS to take down Assad. They're in this game with the United States of America from my point of view. And I don't know who can disprove this. If anyone's listening to this show and can refute the logic I have just presented on this program, I would welcome it because it's an ugly conclusion that leads us to believe that we are culpable for the atrocities being committed by these vermin in ISIS, especially against innocent women and children. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. What I wouldn't give to wake up every morning and feel that the intelligence services were actually out to stop the enemies instead of the patriots. What I wouldn't give to live in an America protected well, uh, here we go. We all have to protect ourselves right now. We don't know where it's going to come from next. You walk around the streets of Manhattan, you don't know if a guy's going to pull out a box cutter and, and, and cut your wife's purse off her arm. You don't know who's going to pee on your shoe. You don't know where... Uh, the streets stink. I got to tell you something right now. I don't mean to say it, you know, just for effect. I'm in Midtown Manhattan. I like to walk at night. I love it. It makes me happy and healthy. The streets stink. It smells as though the Ringling Brothers, Barnum and Bailey circus train derailed and the animals escaped the other night we were walking i said is it horse manure and the other guy laughed said i smell camel the other one says i smell uh, elephant the other one said, no one could detect which animals droppings they were smelling the streets stank as i say like a zoo train got derailed and the animals just dumped in the street i never smell anything like this you can puke it's worse than any third world country i've ever been in Thank you, Mayor de Blasio. Your socialist policies stink to high heaven. That's the truth. Go walk around the streets in the, in the 50s at night. And tell me what you smell. A $50 million apartment, you can walk downstairs, you need a gas mask. That's all. But the news is, uh, is even worse than the smell in the streets. And you can't get around the city. This idiot converted half the streets into garden malls. You risk your life with a bicycle. I saw a bicycle go by. I almost hit a woman. He screamed at her, get out of my way. And he used the curse word. He said, how do you expect? He cursed at her. She was in his way, that idiot. These bicycle homicidal maniacs, they're in every city. I almost got killed from one in San Francisco. Anyway, that's the world you live in. And you have to keep living. The best answer here is to keep living and have as good a time as you can. And hope to God that things turn around and we get a president who A, loves America, and B, changes everything in America back to the, the way it was, but even more so. And we put in strict controls on our borders. We stop bringing in haters of America. You know, I was in the museum yesterday. Here's something that's perplexing to me. I spent hours in the Metropolitan Museum seeing my old favorites and some of the new ones. And the museum is filled with all sorts of people. I mean, you can hardly walk around. It's like a destination rather than a museum now. It's people consuming art rather than appreciating art. But all right, that's their business, not mine. I'm in the museum. I'm standing in front of the standard great paintings. And the uh, floors are filled with Christian art as well. If you go through some of the wings, you see some of the great medieval art. And I see the museum has a fair number of uh, women in burqas. 
or head coverings. And I ask myself, why are they in this citadel of Western civilization? Their culture stands opposed to Western civilization. They seem to hate Western civilization. What are they doing here? And so I didn't understand it. What are they walking around a museum for if they hate everything about Western civilization? I asked myself, and I didn't get any answer, by the way. There was no answer to be had. I couldn't understand it. And no one in my group could answer it. You come to America as a tourist, let's say. You're wearing a headscarf or a burqa. And you look like you're from uh, the deep part of that culture that you're portraying with your uh, Chattel bondage. Why are you in a museum that represents Western civilization at its finest? What are you gaining from this? And if you like it so much, why don't you join Western civilization instead of uh, frowning upon it, I ask myself. And I don't get any answers when I ask that question. A anyway, it was amazing to see the great paintings once again, and I don't have to rattle them off to show you how smart I am. But every time I stand in front of El Greco's Toledo, I start to quiver. I get a chill up my leg the way some did when Obama... Uh, became president. El Greco, Toledo. Go look at that painting. You know, when you see paintings that we all learned about in Art 101 in, in, in actual reality, in the oil, it's hard to believe what they, the difference is between a picture, in other words, and a picture. There's a difference between a picture of a picture and the picture itself, just as there's a difference between Life 101 and what you're reading about on your iPhone. Now let's go back to the callers on the Savage Nation. WABC, Anthony, Line 8, go ahead. What's the topic? You're on the Savage Nation. Uh, yes, sir. My name is Anthony Millay in Rockland County. I'm a former member of Defense Intelligence Community, and one thing that we're not hearing uh, in any of the reports, sir, is that remember that this unauthorized server, unsecured server, was in operation for several years. The type of, secure, uh, the type of classification in, uh, information that the Secretary of State received is called SCI, that's sensitive compartmented intelligence. This is the kind of intelligence that, if in the wrong hands, sources and methods can be gleaned. In other words, the enemy can find out who our spies are undercover, identify them, and, as you may know, either torture them for information, feed them disinformation, or find out when SEAL Team 6 is going to be flying a Chinook nearby and what time and what place to be there with the proper weapon to shoot them down. I got the last part of it loud and clear. I got that message loud and clear. So I ask you, an intelligent man from the intelligence services, why are the intelligent people on Fox News covering up this intelligence? Well, so, I mean, the, the obvious answer is that the Clintons are very rich, very powerful, very wealthy. Okay, he's faded out. I get, I get, No, I understand they probably hacked him out. They probably hacked him out. You know that everyone who works in intelligence is not... Uh, as free as you may think. They hacked them out. That's all. Thank you, Anthony, from WABC. I wish you well. Don't go jogging in Marcy Park over the next several uh, years, at least until 2016. Galen, line one, WMAL. Go ahead, please. What's the topic on the Savage Nation today? Uh, intelligence information from our allies, which the Secretary of State could very well have had access to, and if compromised, could seriously damage their security and our relationships with them. Okay, is that the is that the entire statement, or is there more to it? Also, um, oh, pardon me. Uh, All right, thanks for the call. I got to move it along because we're almost out of time in this hour. It's not that I'm dismissing or dissing. Line two, Barry, KBOI Radio, what's your topic, please? Yeah, you had mentioned that Israel and the America was in cahoots to support ISIS. Uh, I don't think there's any merit to that at all. Israel has no reason to be in the game. To them, they like to see the Arabs fight each other and kill each other. The best thing they could do is... All right, wait, 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 wait. No, I tell you, you're 100% wrong. And I'll tell you why. Do you remember the movie Schindler's List? Hello, are you still there, Barry? Yes, I am. Okay. We heard about Mr. Schindler, who was a righteous uh, Gentile who saved Jews during World War II from Hitler's Holocaust, right? Yeah, he benefited by it. Don't you think, don't you think that the Jewish state has a special obligation to save other minorities from the atrocities being committed by the Muslim barbarians and ISIS? No, these people hate Israelis. They all hate Israel. Wait, wait, hold on. You mean the Christian women who are in whorehouses being sold as slaves hate Israelis? But it's, it's, 
it's not Israel's job to go in there and... and well, it wasn't Schindler's job to go in there and protect Jews, was it? It wasn't his job and the other righteous Gentiles, such as the many of the Christian pr pastors but that, who protected Jews. It wasn't their job either, but they did it. They risked their lives. Some of them lost their lives. It wasn't their job. So I say shame on Israel for not doing more, by the way. Oh, well, okay. You could say it that way. But on the other hand, it's not Israel's... There is no other hand. There is no other hand. You've got girls who are being raped over and over and over again in these in these uh, brothels being owned by these vermin, these greasy throwback vermin who are raping them around the clock and we're not helping the girls. Why doesn't Israel do something? Why? They're in the Middle East, they have the most powerful military, they know where these brothels are, they can find them, and they could do something and they're doing nothing. I don't believe that they don't have an obligation. They have more of an obligation rather than less of an obligation. I don't. I di I disagree. I don't think. I think. Well, why do you disagree? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, we'll go back. I'm not letting it go. Why do you disagree? If your attitude had prevailed, then none of the Jews would have been saved in World War II at all. You would have said they had no reason. They had no business. No one has to help them. They're not our problem. Why are you saying this is different? Well, I mean, it's not Israel's job to go in there. Israel has enemies all around it. Is wait a minute. Oh, so whose job was it to save the Jews in World War II? is having one Muslim group kill the other Muslim Well, you're not answering me. You're not answering me. Whose job was it to intervene with Hitler's Holocaust and save Jews and others from the gas chambers? Whose job was that? Well, it was, I mean, the world should have done that, but the United States, FDR didn't even do that. He well, what do you mean the world should have done that? Then the, why is the world not supposed to go in now and help the Christians and the Yazidis who are being mercilessly slaughtered and raped? I agree with you. The world should go in, but don't hold Israel. It's a small country. Don't hold Israel. No, I hold Israel. No, it's Israel's double responsibility because all of the victims of ISIS are minorities, Christians and Yazidis, and the girls are being mercilessly used as sex toys by these greasy vermin. I have been raped 30 times, and it's not even lunchtime, cried one young Yazidi woman in a dangerous and desperate call, reports Phyllis Chesler in today's New York Post. Chillingly, the girl begged the man on the line, someone embedded with the Kurdish Peshmerga fighting ISIS. She said, if you know where we are, please bomb us. There is no life after this. I am going to kill myself anyway. Shame on Israel. It's their job, for God's sakes. They're the ones who should be going in there, and they should have gone in there a long time ago. I'll be right back. It's the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. It's a uh, state of mind where the chrome is thick and the women are straight. It's a time when the president is a patriot and a real commander-in-chief. It's a time when the military kicks you-know-what and the police keep the streets safe enough for your mother to go out for a loaf of bread at midnight. That's the Savage Nation. Let's go to the callers and talk about the topics that remain in this hour on the program. I'm not going to be here much longer other than this afternoon. Then it's back home to California with perhaps a stop here and there uh, along the way. And the news, I hope, gets better by Monday. Ben on WABC. I'm calling regarding the comment that the guy made the ask him if he why Israel is not doing anything. I think that America is controlling the situation and threatening Israel not to do anything. Well why does America do nothing to stop ISIS? Well, my opinion is to bring down Assad. It was confirmed by a former intelligence official who finally uh, uh, broke the ice and said the same thing I've been saying for a long while. There's no sense to this. ISIS is not an, a military with, a, with an air force or a navy. They don't have anywhere near the capacity that a military has. Why are they not being stopped by the biggest military in the world? The answer is because the biggest militaries in the world, that is the U.S., France, Germany, Britain, don't want ISIS to be stopped. They made a decision to bring down Assad with ISIS as a factotum force. Yep. Thank you for the call. That's that's one man's opinion. That's It's only my opinion. Remember, I don't have any friends in high places. I wish I could say I did. 
I don't go to cocktails after the show and learn the inside story of this and that. I wish I did. I just pr try to put two and two together. It kills me to not understand this. I don't get it. How could we stand by while girls are being raped in brothels by these greasy barbarians crying for us to bomb the brothels and we do nothing? How can we go to sleep at night thinking about them? There's one man doing it, and he will be on the show on Monday. He's a Canadian Jewish man who said he had to do something because his government wasn't. And uh, we're going to get him on here. He's trying to save the uh, girls. He's already saved many of them. Maybe with your help and my help, with more money and more awareness, we can raise the money necessary to get more of these girls out from the death hands uh, of these Muslim barbarians. That's all I can say to you. I don't know what else to say to you. Uh, unless we stop them, unless we go in and pull these girls out, they're going to be raped around the clock. It's sickening. It makes me ill. This man founded the liberation of Christian and Yazidi children of Iraq a year ago after the Muslim jihadists laid siege to Mosul and Sinjar. And I'll tell you more about it on Monday. And maybe you'll want to help the modern-day Schindlers save more of these girls and perhaps turn the tide of public opinion to something as serious as this. Because rape on an industrial level is something I have not heard or read about, as I said, since I read about the rape of Nanking. I mean, we all know about the horrors of the rape of Nanking when Japanese troops went wild in the streets of Nanking and raped women and children and grandmothers. The world said it could never happen again. It can't happen again. Never again. Never again. Well, it's happening again. Only I guess it's not happening to people who have any representation in America. How come the Pope isn't saying anything about it? The Pope knows an awful lot about global warming. Doesn't he know about global rape? coming and give a speech to the United Nations and a speech to our Congress, maybe the great man, the ex-bouncer from Argentina, could say one word about the rape going on down there. I love it. I just love it. The propaganda is overwhelming wherever you turn. All right, again, this topic won't go away. I raised a very sore issue, which is why Israel's doing nothing to stop ISIS, because it makes no sense to me, other than Israel wants Assad gone, and they're using ISIS to do the dirty work. That's all. You know, this tr goes all the way back to Benghazi. You're talking about Hillary's emails. Is it related to Benghazi? Did something get given up with the coordinates? And did they want uh, an Ambassador Stevens knocked off? I and mean, people who are talking about these things put two and two together. But the story's bigger than that. And all again, what were the weapons being sent from Libya after the fall of Gaddafi to the so-called rebels in Syria who were going to overthrow Assad? Again, there was a long-term plan to get rid of Assad. Now, I'm not a defender of Assad. He's, an, he's a very horrible man. But he is the devil who we know, as opposed to the devils who we know are much worse. What do you think will occur in Syria after Assad is gone, assuming that he will be gone? Tell me what do you think is going to happen. What do you think will happen in Syria after Assad is gone? Think about that. Think about that and then ask yourself who's actually in charge and who's doing the thinking. Who is thinking in this country anymore? Is there anyone left in government with a brain? I would raise my hand and say it's Government Zero, which is why I wrote the book, Government Zero. And yes, I'm going to have you go on to the, uh, the sites like barnesandnoble.com, amazon.com, and order your first edition copy right now before they're gone. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. You charge it. You were the official in charge. Did you like the service? What, like with a cloth or something? No. Well, no. no it's Did you try I, to I don't. I know you want to make a point, and I can just repeat what I have said. It's a simple in order to in order to be as cooperative as possible, we have turned over the server. They can do whatever they want to with the server to figure out what's there, or what's not there. That's for the you know people investigating it to try to figure out. But we turned over 
everything that was work-related, every single thing. Personal stuff, we did not. I had no obligation to do so and did not. All right, thank all right, you, that's enough thank already. You, we, we already had eight years of Hillary Clinton. Well, like with the Cleoth, like with the Cleoth, who does she think she is talking to? Are the American people that stupid that they don't know who the Clintons are? We didn't have eight years of one crime after another committed on the American landscape. Well, here she is. She wiped the server. Now, you know, there's an interesting question here. It is her own inspector general's department in the State Department that's pursuing this. It means that the dam has broken between Hillary Clinton and her absolutely fanatical control over everyone. The inspector general of the State Department is saying, hey, there's a problem here. And we want to find out what was on those. What was on there? What was she hiding? Does anyone listening to this show think that this is a minor story? Do you actually buy the Democrat line that this is nothing? Do you want to live in a country where, let's say, the Republicans win the next election? Do you want someone in the federal government to have 60,000 emails that disappear and not know what was on them? Is that the kind of country you think you want to live in? Oh, of course, you're going to answer. It's not a big deal. It's only Republicans doing it because you are prejudiced. Do you know what prejudice means? You know where the word prejudice comes from? To prejudge. And you've prejudged that anyone who attacks Hillary Clinton, even if she committed a crime, is not a good person. No, my friends, where there's smoke, there's fire. There were secure messages on that computer or the device she was using, and she sent them to somebody. What were on the, What were the messages? What was on it? We know that there were satellite images. Do you know what that means? The most top secret images that the government has are Defense Department, Department satellite images. Think about this. The Defense Department has high-flying satellites. They can photograph a cigarette pack on someone walking around, around the globe. Those images were sent to Hillary Clinton for some reason, and she sent them to someone for some reason. If you live in a democracy, we have a right to know what did she receive, when did she receive it, who did she send it to, and what did they do with that message, and what was it all about? Don't you think you want to know? We'll find out sure enough because they've already pulled in Anthony Weiner's wife, Huma Abedin. She's now being grilled. She's being grilled like a salmon over hot coals. One of them is going to break. One of these roasted smelts being slow cooked over hot fire is going to crack because if they don't, they'll go to jail for 25 years for God knows what, perjury, espionage, God knows what they can get on. You know that there are people right now in prison for having done less? The other issue is Trump standing up for America's immigration laws and O'Reilly really coming out nakedly as the left-wing demagogue actor he has always been. It's a shock to me. That Fox News, which frankly is all we have left, has moved so far to the left, especially on immigration. There are some very good people at Fox News, but there are some not very good people at Fox News, and O'Reilly happens to be one of them. I have called O'Reilly the leprechaun for many years, which is why I've been banned from Fox News. He's their big star. At least he was until Martha Washington came along. And now, of course, the leprechaun has been trumped by Martha Washington. But now he's trumped himself. He attacks Trump on an issue that is clearly a dividing line between conservative and liberal. Did you hear that interchange? Again, let me just repeat. Let's just calm down. Every nation on the earth is defined by borders, language, and culture. That is how Michael Savage, in 1994, when I formed the Paul Revere Society, I was asked to define what is a nation. How do you define a nation? You know that no one had clearly defined a nation until I did? And I said, well, I think it's borders, language, and culture. Let me tell you something. If anyone has defined a nation better than that, let me know who it is. A nation is defined by its borders, language, and culture. I defined it in 1994. My next book, my last book, my biggest book, my blockbuster, the only book you'll ever need on the subject of government, in your lifetime is government zero it's not even for sale except on amazon but listen to the subtitle no borders no language no culture from best-selling author of stop the coming civil war michael savage reveals the massive dangers currently leading to the demise of our nation oh you think you've heard it all before savage sounds the alarm about how progressives and radical Islamists are working together towards similar goals 
to destroy Western civilization and remake it in their own respective images. These two dark forces are transforming our once free republic into a socialist third world dictatorship ruled by government zero, absolute government and zero representation. Combining in-depth analysis and biting commentary, Michael Savage cuts through mainstream media propaganda to reveal an all-out attack on our borders, language, and culture by progressive and Islamist travelers who have hijacked public policy from national defense to immigration to public education. There is only one thing that can stop this terrifying agenda. Michael Savage has a plan. Get the inside story before it's too late. I actually have chills up my spine as I read a definition of my own last nonfiction book. Government Zero on Amazon now. It won't be out until October. But let me tell you something. People are really wanting to read that book. And I want to tell you something else. I've been doing this for 21 years. I'm not going to be doing it forever. And I want this book, Government Zero, to be my swan song. I want to say bye-bye, and I want to disappear from the airwaves and from the written word in a couple of years. That's going to be the end of it. I'm not going to do this forever. And I want you to understand that you've got to carry the ball for me. You've got to pick it up, and you've got to carry the baton. Now, let's go back to the issues of the day. Trump is right. O'Reilly is a left-wing demagogue, 100% for amnesty, as is his boss, Murdoch. I happen to know from the inside, it leaks, Murdoch is a one-worlder. Murdoch is a new world order. The Fox News people have been told, these are your marching orders, you're for amnesty, and you hate Trump. You turn on Fox News. Every minute, it's an attack on Trump. They become like CNN and MSNBC, where it's like a joke. Here, I'll pick up the New York Times. Front page of today's New York Times. Little story. Trump paints GOP in corner on immigration. I don't think he's painted him in a corner. I think he's defined the issue of the day. He hasn't painted anyone in a corner. It's the other cowards who are in a corner, not him. He's clearly out there. You want to tell you something else about Trump that you don't know, that I have defined? I said it to somebody on a visit here. I don't know who. I said Trump is surprising he doesn't get angry. They push him pretty hard. They press his buttons. O'Reilly tried to paint him into being a demagogue monster who wanted to deport little poor foreign children. He didn't freak. He didn't get angry. I'll say it again. Donald Trump is very Reagan-esque. I said it first. He's sort of the Ronald Reagan of our time. He's affable. He's likable. He doesn't get hateful. He says it like it is without getting mad. I couldn't do it. That's why I'm not in politics. It's why I'm on the radio. I blow up too easily. I'd make a terrible politician. Now, I want to tell you something else about anchor babies. I told it to you yesterday, but it is worth repeating today. Canada, beautiful nation, wonderful people. They were being flooded by Chinese who were coming in in the ninth month of pregnancy, delivering the baby in Canada who became instant citizens. Then mommy became a citizen. Daddy was born in from China, the grandparents. Canada got freaked out. And take a guess who stopped the anchor baby law in Canada. It was a Chinese-Canadian who said, we cannot afford to have all of China deliver their babies here. And they eliminated the anchor baby law. They eliminated maternity tourism. They eliminated it on the spot. And it was a Chinese-Canadian. He was not doing it because he was a racist against Chinese. He was doing it because he was a rationalist who loved Canada, as am I. Michael Savage, rationalist who loves America. Well, here's a little story for those of you who believe that all in the other worlds are better than this world comes to us from Breitbart in England. Halal slaughterhouse where staff were caught abusing animals closes down. Outrageous footage shows the sensitive Muslim slaughterers kicking animals in the face, smashing the animals into solid objects head first, picking animals up and throwing them by their legs, fleeces, throats and ears. Now you see, halal law requires abattoirs to stun animals before slaughter to prevent unnecessary suffering. But some exemptions for Jewish and Muslim throwbacks, they don't have to do that. They're allowed to torture the animals because that's the way it says it's supposed to be done 5,000 years ago. And so over three days in December, activists from Animal Aid, God bless them, used hidden cameras to record footage at the Muslim halal slaughterhouse. And you wanna hear what they found? A worker hacking and sawing at animals' throats in direct contravention of Islamic practice. A sheep, or many sheep being kicked in the face and head, lifted by their ears, legs, or fleeces, and thrown into solid structures. A worker standing on the neck of a conscious sheep and bouncing up and down. 
Halal staff erupting into laughter over a sheep bleeding to death, with spectacles drawn around her eyes in green paint as she died and bled out. Employees of the Halal slaughterhouse taunting and frightening animals by waving knives, smacking them on the head and shouting at them. Now, I know many of you will say they're just animals, have fun. But you see, I'm not that kind of guy. I think the opposite is true. And I think that anyone who does this to an animal should be given an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, and a slap in the head for a slap in the head. And those are the wonderful headlines of this hell that God has created called Earth. Here's a couple of headlines that I think are worthy of discussion. You know about the missing emails. That's a big story, but no one's going to really, no one expects it to uh, result in any problems for Hillary. She's above the law. As you well know, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. They own the courts and the judges. They own the Justice Department. It's all a sham. And the only reason the FBI stepped in, in my humble opinion, is to make her look better, not worse. You see, you don't even understand this. This is a triple game here. They, oh, we're going to get to the bottom of it. They're going to discover that she was actually doing something good for America. That's what's coming. No one said that yet except me. Hillary will be totally blackmailable if elected. A friend of mine sent me an email saying what nobody is talking about, but what everyone needs to worry about is that Hillary will be totally blackmailable if she's elected. A new poll. Uh, here we go again. A new poll. Blah, 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 blah. Take a guess what tops Americans' concerns. Terrorism, mainly Islamic State, the state of Islam that Obama says doesn't exist and has nothing to do with Islam. The number two issue after terrorism is immigration. Immigration is a big problem to everyone except Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama and, of course, the fraudulent Democrat Socialist Islamist Party. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. It's the Savage Nation. We've got to lighten it up a little bit because this is really reaching a point of fright. When you see an individual who would be president who is even accused of this and has no defense other than I wiped it with a cloth as a joke and she walks out of the questions. Do you really want to live in a country like this? Yeah, maybe you do. Maybe you already do. I don't know. But we've had people calling this show who work for FBI, CIA, DIA. I can't even name the agencies because I don't know all the acronyms. But you know what I heard in the voices of these individuals? People who have given their lives to protect America's secrets. They love America. It's easy for us in conservative radio to bash government and say, oh, everyone who works for the government is this, everyone who works for government is that, they're all lazy, they all want a pension. Let's not overgeneralize. Most of them work because they love America, and they do it because they want to keep this country safe and great. And I don't know whether they're Democrat or Republican, I could care less. All I know is that we have someone who wants to be president who is less than presidential in what she did. There's no question in my mind that whether or not she's eventually found out and punished for it is irrelevant. What is relevant is that she's not qualified to be president based even on the suspicion that she did something wrong. Either we live in a law, a land of laws, or we live in a lawless land. It's that simple. Let me repeat that in case you missed it. Either we live in a land of laws that apply to all of us equally, or we live in a lawless land. You make the choice. I've already made that choice. I've been talking about it a long time. And we'll continue to talk about it on the Savage Nation. There are stories that are worth mentioning. Here's one of the Black Lives Matter organizer and a winner of an Oprah Winfrey scholarship. A, a man who was allegedly a hate crime victim has been revealed to be white. Can you believe this one? Yeah, I'll read the story. I, I know it's a right-wing conspiracy, but no, he was white. Here's another one. Trump border wall proposal sparks controversy. But barriers are popular worldwide. That didn't make it to the old York Times. Oh, one other story you may have missed. George Soros, the money trader, the fanatic who's made billions betting against currencies, the man who has put billions into green energy, the man who bashes coal, he just invested, ooh, a lot of money in coal. After driving the price of coal almost to zero, he moved in and bought a billion dollars worth of coal stock. That's right. Soros warms up to coal 
as stock prices hit bottom. Did you hear that story? Well, you ought to look into it if you want to know what the word hypocrisy means. Billionaire George Soros warms up to call as stock prices hit bottom. This is the left-wing lying fanatic investor who has demonized fossil fuels for years through his think tanks, through his political contributions, and now that he's driven big coal stocks into the dirt, he bought them up. He bought stock in two large coal companies, firms that his critics say George Soros himself helped bring to their knees. Now, buying low is the hallmark of any shoot investor. We all know that. But buying coal, doesn't that go against the political and environmental ideology that George Soros has long espoused? I think so. You see, he runs the Climate Policy Initiative think tank. But did you know that George Soros just snapped up one million shares of Peabody Energy and half a million shares of Arch Coal, which now gives him significant controlling sh stakes in what's left of the United States coal industry? Hold on one minute. You're not going to believe what you're about to hear. Six years ago, Peabody Coal was trading under the symbol BTU. It was uh, at, a, at a price of $90 a share. But because Barack Obama, the puppet of Soros, punished the coal industry with costly mandates and regulation, Peabody shares have fallen to around $1. By the way, neither George Soros nor his New York-based investment firm, Soros Fund Management, would comment on the coal play, citing a long-standing policy of not discussing investments, according to Fox News. That's America at its best. Savage. I woke up this morning in the hotel room where I get three newspapers, the New York Post, Daily News, New York Times. Felt like old days back in my family home in Queens where we used to get five papers. There used to be the Journal American and one other paper, which the, the Daily Mirror. And my father, who was not an educated man, was a well-read man and loved the news. And I'd say, Dad, why do you read five newspapers? He said, I want to get different opinions. Well, guess what? So do I. But I don't know anyone listening to this show who has an opinion that differs than mine. When you have ongoing rape of young girls who are screaming out and not one word comes out of the mouth of the ice cream licking president or so-called women's rights groups or any of the other people in the human rights business, it's enough to make anyone crazy. So I open the post and there's an opinion piece by Phyllis Chesler and it goes like this. Modern Schindler's. Quote, I've been raped 30 times and it's not even lunchtime, cried one young Yazidi woman in a dangerous and desperate call. Chillingly, the young woman begged the man on the line, someone embedded with the Kurdish Peshmaga fighting ISIS. She said, quote, if you know where we are, please bomb us. There is no life after this. I'm going to kill myself anyway. That request was made a year ago. So far, not one whorehouse has been bombed. Not one slave auction has been interrupted by your great, heroic leader of the Western world, Barack Hussein Obama. But there is one man who is doing everything he can to stop this. There is one man who is a modern-day Schindler. And he has a name, and he'll be with us on Monday. He's like the man who saved thousands of Jews during the Holocaust. He's a Canadian Jewish businessman, Stephen Maimon. And he's overseen the rescue of more than 120 kidnapped Christian and Yazidi girls in Iraq. I intend to send them a large donation and do everything I can to stop this. I've never seen anything like it. It makes me crazy. I've got to tell you something. I'm on vacation with my family in New York. I was supposed to take this day off and do certain things. When I saw that story, I started to sweat and I got angry again. I also got angry when I was watching the lipstick smears on Fox News yakking this morning and not saying one word about the rape of these girls not saying one word instead celebrating women army rangers like that's the biggest story on earth instead of talking about the real heroes in combat we're supposed to celebrate some women because they let them into the rangers if they took the tests four times it got me crazier when I saw that the women on Fox News, and I blame them, by the way, because I don't expect anything from CNN. I don't expect anything from the anti-American crowd at MSNBC. But I expect something from the women at Fox News to talk about rape and sex slavery. Not one word. We're talking about industrial rape not seen on the planet for, what, hundreds of years? Tell me when there was last industrial rape. Write down the two words. Rape on an industrial scale. The last I read of such a situation 
was during the rape of Nanking, China, by Japanese troops who went wild and raped and killed with impunity. That was in World War II. We are now witnessing industrial rape, rape on an industrial scale, by the greasy perverts in ISIS. Obama is licking an ice cream cone while this goes on, could care less, hanging out with the poor people, the billionaires and trillionaires that he's known to hang around with, while talking about income inequality, the frauds at the United Nations, the twisted minds at the European Union, the vermin in the politi politically correct world of the Western intelligentsia, the women's groups have said nothing about the rape of these girls. They're begging for us to bomb the brothels where they're being raped around the clock by these greasy perverts in ISIS. They're saying, kill us because we're going to kill ourselves when we get out of here. And you're sitting idly by. You know what kills me about this? Do you know how many Jews I have met in my lifetime who said, America did nothing during the Holocaust to save the Jews. America could have bombed the tracks to Auschwitz, and they did nothing. Where are the American Jewish community? Where's the American Jewish community now? And I point my finger at the American Jewish community now. They're the ones who should be doing more than anybody on earth. They should be doing more than anybody. Where are all of those loudmouths that have attacked me over the years? Nowhere to be found. What a sad, sick time that we're living in, that even the women of Fox News won't cover this topic for reasons known only to their bosses. And by the way, while we're talking about the geniuses on Fox News, has anyone on Fox News followed what Michael Savage did on this show on Tuesday? When we had one intelligence official after another call the show secretly and talk about the crimes that Hillary Clinton committed by getting those secret cartographic images out of that uh, locked secure facility. I haven't seen one follow up story. It didn't get posted anywhere. I did it on Tuesday. We broke the news. I don't care about that. It's not about me. It's way beyond about me. We had a national security breach. That's on the top level of national security breaches by a woman who would be president of the United States of America. And nobody is talking about the fact that her messages were smuggled out of a secure facility and there are other people involved in the food chain of that smuggling. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? No one covered that. So we're talking about the rape of the truth, the rape of young girls, uh, the rape of the stock market by China and other topics right here on the Savage Nation. Incidentally, while we're talking about the psychosis of liberalism, here's one for you that I found on my own website. Boston University professor, that's an oxymoron, by the way, blames the United States for Islamic sex slavery. I swear to God. A so-called professor wrote this. Her name is Kesia Ali. That should tell you everything you need to know about the cover-up. But apparently the so-called professor blames the United States for sex slavery in the Middle East. It's unbelievable. You see, she says that the Islamic State is not practicing sex slavery because it is sanctioned in the Quran, which it is, by the way. It's because the United States has, has done very bad things in Iraq. This is what passes for analysis by psychotic professors on political campuses today. The other news is pretty uh, terrifying, including the uh, fiscal news. People are freaked out over the stock market. They want to know what's going on and why is it going on. Why is the market falling like this? Who do you blame? Well, I guess they can blame Donald Trump if they want. Oil is below $40. But is that the reason? No, that's not the sole reason. We know that China is manipulating its currency in order to make U.S. and other foreign products more expensive to their own domestic market, to their buyers. Is that the whole reason? Obviously not. It's probably more complicated than that. And I'm not a fiscal expert, but I can do math. I can do two plus two equals four. I got this email this morning from Craig Smith, who has been a long-term sponsor of the Savage Nation. As you well know, he has backed my show for over 10 years uh, with his gold company, Swiss America. And here's what he said, Michael, I was just thinking about the global market crush that is underway. The Dow is off 800 points in three days, and the S&P has broken the critical 2050 level and is currently at 1997. The reason I bring it up is this. For the people that listen to your advice in the commercials 
and got the reports and book you offered, they were informed on what is happening and not panicking. Others who didn't listen to you have no clue what to do right now. So once again, Savage, you won't get any credit for it. But the markets did exactly what you predicted they would, as you warned listeners about the growing debt crisis and currency wars. Have a good weekend, Craig from Swiss America. And I'm telling you, this is not a funny story. We don't know what's going to happen. And I don't know if market forces will bring stocks back up. I don't know if the uh, big money is just cashing out so that the little money follows it and then they come back in in a storm. We don't know. We know Apple took a 4% dive. We know Microsoft took a 3.9 dive. We know that Nike took a 3.7 dive. And we know that media stocks in particular were hit like crazy. Disney stock is down 15% from the highs. And why is Disney stock down? Well, we'll talk about what we think. And uh, with Disney alone and, and, frankly, other media stocks. At issue, primarily, is the media. And Disney's main issue is media networks, which includes cable network and broadcasting. And what's that about? Well, I was in a cab last night, and the folks traveling with me said more and more consumers are cutting the cord and dropping traditional cable subscriptions. It's an interesting topic unto itself. Because Disney owns a lot of cable, and they stand to lose a lot of revenue from its subsidiaries like ESPN and ABC. And as we were discussing it, the cab driver turned around, and he said, it's interesting you people should be saying that people are cutting the cord on cable. He said, because my kid doesn't even go on television anymore. He doesn't, they don't watch television. They get all of their TV and all their entertainment off the iPhone. I'd like to tell you the news is good and leave you with a ha-ha feeling for this Friday, but it's not good. It's bad. Economically, the stock market's got people freaked out. It dropped 450 points today. Uh, internationally, there is industrial rape going on on a level I have not seen since the rape of Nanking. And the, the heartbreaking part is that we know it's going on in real time, and Obama is doing nothing about it. Obama is doing nothing about it. UN is doing nothing about it. The EU is doing nothing about it. The human rights racketeers are doing nothing about it. And the girls are crying out from the whorehouses being run by the greasy vermin in ISIS. They're sending messages such as, I've been raped 30 times and it's not even lunchtime. This is in uh, Phyllis Chesler's column today in the New York Post. It's what got me to come in today. I said, look, I'm supposed to be off today, but I can't stay away from th this story. The rape of the Christian Yazidi women and the silence of the West is worse than the silence of the lambs. She's actually begged the man on the phone line to bomb the house that she was being kept in. She says, I'm going to kill myself anyway after what they've done to me. And by the way, the people who have escaped and the other Yazidi women who have joined the anti-ISIS Kurdish groups are not being helped by the United States who will not even send them weapons. We won't even send them weapons. Which side are we on? Are we on the side of the greasy vermin in ISIS? Are we the reason that they're able to rampage with impunity? You're telling me that there aren't hard men in the military who would like to go there and cut their throats and, and, and eliminate them from the earth? You know there are. The problem is we don't have a commander-in-chief. We have a commander-in-grief. And the problem is, is that we're asleep at the switch. And we're talking about Hillary's scandal. It's a huge scandal. The email leaks out of a secure facility. It means someone ferreted the information out of that facility for her to someone else. And nobody is reporting on that, even though that news was broken here on this radio show just the other day from callers in the intelligence community who called anonymously. Be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Boy, oh boy, is there news. Two American military personnel were attacked on a Paris-bound train. I guess they don't know who perpetrated it. We'll have to wait three days to hear it was a Muslim with an AK-47. Remember the other day I told you? Bangkok, right away I told you it was Muslims, Islam. Three days it took them to tell you it was the Islamic war against the world. Here's the story, Fox News. The gunman, not naming him. Three people, including two American military personnel, were injured today when at least one person, again person, armed with an AK-47 and knife, opened fire on a passenger train 
that was heading from Amsterdam to Paris. The gunman was overpowered by off-duty U.S. soldiers. They should have broken his neck. They should have broken his neck and thrown him underneath the train. I suppose he'll be sent to New York City for a show trial. Anyway, when the train stopped in the northern French city of Arras, he was arrested. Two of the victims were seriously injured by the unknown gunman. Huh? They still don't know who did it, huh? What do they think a bunch of Catholic nuns did it? What do they think a bunch of escaped Christian prisoners shot at the American military? We are losing the war. There is a war going on. It's a world war. And they are on the war path. And I've got to tell you something else. As a student of history, this is going to end very badly for us if we don't do something radical very soon. I have studied how in a period of only 20 five years the Arabs came out of the desert and conquered a good portion of the earth in the exact same method methods that are being used today with small armies ten men a thousand men they would attack a village kill everybody in the village rape kill murder put fear in the hearts of people and take over an entire nation they're repeating the same strategy that was written by their master in their holy book and don't think that this is coming out of the air. And stop telling me this is an anomaly. This is a war. We're involved in it. But all right, you don't want to hear about it. You want to hear about something else. I want to go to my website, michaelsavage.com, because I posted some stories that are worth looking at. Trump pushes birthright citizenship to forefront of debate. Good for him. We talked about it the other day. The next story that I posted is China syndrome. Will Beijing's ailing economy drag us all down? Michael Savage Newsletter says Cuba now owes Americans billions in reparations. I guess that hasn't made it to Fox News. Professor blames the United States for ISIS sex slavery. Take a look at her face and you'll know more than you need to know. Another mental case that belongs in a mental hospital rather in a, than in a university. But then again, the differential between the mental hospitals of the 1950s in America and liberal universities today is almost indistinguishable. The only difference is that they pay the inmates now, rather than constrain them in straitjackets. Savage Nation, Intel Ops calls Savage and tell how Clinton broke many laws. Didn't make it to your local website, I guess. Sixteen journalists accept Planned Parenthood awards despite horrifying abortion videos. They are the Nazi killers of the day. Slovakia to welcome Christian immigrants, but reject Muslims. Slovakia to welcome Christian migrants but reject Muslims. Well, that's interesting. That's the opposite of the United States of America. By the way, did you see this little story the other day? Scientists who found, scientists who found gluten sensitivity evidence have now shown it doesn't exist. I couldn't believe that story, but then I've been telling you this for years, that the whole idea of gluten sensitivity is either overblown or completely fraudulent. And I use common sense to tell you that uh, let's be real here. Stop with the gluten-free this and the gluten-free that. I've said it in plain English for two to three years right now because I'm the only expert in the field of nutritional science in the history of, well, in, in current American media. They don't know what they're talking about. How do I prove this? Common sense. Let's start with the Bible. Bread is the staff of life. Let's look at every ethnic we seen on earth. Middle East, they make foodstuffs, flatbreads out of wheat. They haven't heard about gluten sensitivity. They weren't sent to Harvard. Mexico, they make tamales. They haven't uh, gone to Harvard. Wherever you look, you see ethnic groups living on wheat-based products, except in the stupid United States of America, where people are walking around half insane from the nutty diets they're on. Savage.